Hey everybody, it's Dr. Aaron Kowalski, JDRF's Chief Mission Officer and Vice President of Research. One of the fun things I get to do is talk about research advances again with you this year, and there have been a ton. We made super progress on research and advocacy, and I'm really excited to share those with you. One of the other things I get to do in my role at JDRF is go out and talk to people who have type 1 or have a loved one with type 1. And this year, the fun thing we'll do is hear from them out in the field, and I'll answer some of the questions that you all have. The number one goal for us here at JDRF is to cure type 1 diabetes and walk away one day. And we look at islet replacement as the way to do this. Viasite has been using an approach we call macro encapsulation and have done the first human clinical trials of this approach. It's exciting stuff. And in the first studies just reported in January, they're seeing the cells grow up and differentiate, start to become like islets and make some insulin. It's the early stages, but to me, this is one of the most exciting advances of this last year. There are other amazing groups working on this problem as well. Up in Boston at Harvard and MIT, we have two of the smartest people in diabetes, Dr. Doug Melton and Dan Anderson, working on another approach to encapsulation. And they've shown just this February that in mice, they can grow insulin-producing cells and restore normal blood sugar levels. Still work to be done again, but this is really exciting stuff. Hi, Aaron, this is Cindy. My son was diagnosed when he was 14 years old. He's now 27 and engaged to be married. So of course, as his mom, I'm very, very curious about what JDRF is doing in terms of clinical trials and other research initiatives so that he and future generations can live in a world without type 1 diabetes. Cindy, thank you so much for your question. This is obviously a huge um, concern of mine. I have three kids and we worry about our family and our family history of type 1 diabetes. I'm so proud that JDRF has taken a leadership role in prevention. Over the last 10 years, we've learned a ton about what causes type 1 diabetes and the progression of type 1. Just this year, we led an initiative with a number of key stakeholders to redefine the stages of type 1 diabetes. And this is really important because it'll help companies develop new therapies and do clinical trials faster. I'm proud of our partnership with the Helmsley Charitable Trust. They've worked hand in hand with us on our prevention portfolio. This is a top priority for JDRF. We need to be able to stop type 1 from ever happening, and we're launching clinical trials to try to do this. One of the really exciting ones that I like to talk about is a trial that's happening called Frida in Bavaria, and they're testing all three and four-year-olds for the markers of type 1. What we know is if you have the markers of type 1, you're at very high risk, and we're looking at therapies like oral insulin that may be able to stop the progression. We need to stomp out type 1 from ever happening in next generations, and these studies are providing the groundwork to do that. Hi, Aaron. It's Alicia. My friends have questions about artificial pancreas technologies. How do you suggest I explain it? Hey, Alicia. It's great to hear from you. And for folks who don't know Alicia, she's a tremendous type 1 diabetes champion. Thank you for the question. It's a great one. Artificial pancreas systems will be pumps and sensors that talk to each other. And the amazing thing of what we've seen in clinical trials is they do two really important things. They make our glucose levels better, less highs and less lows, and they also ease some of the burden. As you know, living with type 1 diabetes, I always say, is a 24-7, 365 day a year job. This last year has seen tremendous progress. We have the Special Diabetes Program, which funded the University of Virginia, one of the sites that we've worked with for 10 years now, to generate data that we hope will lead to the FDA approval of some of the first AP systems. And we expect the first AP systems to hit the market in 2017. I'm super excited. It's something I've worked on for a long time at JDRF, and I can't wait to have my own AP system. Another treatment area that a lot of people ask me about is glucose responsive insulin and where are we? This is the idea that you would create an insulin that only worked when your body needed it. That is only when your blood sugar was high. We're really excited. We just announced a partnership with Sanofi and they are gonna fund with JDRF four really innovative ideas on how to do this. Still gonna take a little while, but this is an area of exciting research that could lead to a transformative way that we manage our diabetes. 
Hi Aaron, this is Andrew from New York City, and I was wondering what JDRF was doing in Washington to help reimbursement and expand T1D therapies. Can you tell me some good news? Advocacy is such an important thing that we do at JDRF, and one of the areas that we focus on is the ultimate metric for success for us is somebody doing better with their diabetes, meaning if we have a new advance and you don't have access to it, we haven't succeeded yet. I'm super excited about a new partnership we've just launched at JDRF in partnership with the Helmsley Charitable Trust and the Type 1 Diabetes Exchange. This is focused on access to new advances in type 1 diabetes, whether it's CGMs, artificial pancreas systems, and eventually a cure for type 1. We need all of you to sign up to be advocates. You can make a huge difference and partner with us to make sure people do better. I'm so excited about the advances that we've made over the last year. It's really because of people like you. As a person who lives with type 1 and has a family member with type 1, it's so meaningful. We need to get to the goal line. We need to prevent, cure, and treat type 1 diabetes. And we can't do it without your support. The advances, the partnership, the collaboration across the community is the reason we're making such progress, and I'm incredibly grateful for that.